A book that changed my life? Well, there are many, of course. I mean, it's very difficult to just pick one book that changed my life. But if I did have to pick one, then I think I would pick, um, it's a French book. It's by Marguerite Dura, who um, was a very famous French novelist and filmmaker. So I, I like to kind of relate to her a little bit as I've made documentaries of my own and she's been a film director. And she really was a very modern woman in 20th century France. and. Um, she fought with the resistance and she was a great friend of Mitterrand and um, she had many lovers and um, she grew up in v Vietnam and the book that I think sort of changed me is called The Lover which was made into a film, um, a film that she wasn't very happy with and I didn't think it was that great but um, <clears throat> it's about a young colonial girl, funny enough as I've been talking about The Forgotten Summer and the co colonials, it's about a young colonial girl, her mother is a teacher in Vietnam and she's rather a precocious 13, 14 year old and she's traveling on uh, a ferry, a very short ferry that's crossing a river in Vietnam and this very wealthy Chinese who is about 29 or 30, stunningly good looking in this, I think it's a Rolls Royce or a, a, a very flash car is also on the ferry and she's wearing um, high heels and a hat that I think her mother gave her and they begin to talk to each other and they become lovers. Um, now you would say this to anybody and they kind of go my god you know this is underage and but which is part of what makes Marguerite Dura's work so extraordinary because in this day and age there might be difficulties about writing such a story but the girl is so mature and the relationship between the two of them is so sensitive and so beautiful. He takes her to this room in, in, in the town. Um, I'm just trying to remember which, Saigon, I think it is. Um, and, and they make love behind, and there's these kind of slatted shutters, which we have at home in the South of France. So, you know, often when I first went down there, I would lie on the bed in the afternoon and think of these kind of slatted shutters. And it has a very, very kind of um, sensual, pull for me now and the book is exceedingly personal and um, remarkable and it really did change my life. because she says that it's a memoir but I I don't know if it's a memoir I mean I think that's one of the great things about who she is and how she writes is that it's that thing that crossing of fact and fiction again is that it could be a memoir and maybe it's not maybe it's a fiction and it's a remarkable it's called The Lover the writers that have inspired me, I, uh, Marguerite Dorin, of course, because I've just spoken about her. Um, Isabella Lende, who is a South American writer who now lives in San Francisco. The House of Spirits, um, the island at the bottom of the earth, I think it's called now. Um, I can't, can't remember the titles off the top of my head now. She's remarkable. She's, it, her work is, is, um, is slightly more... Um, magical realism than uh, than uh, Dura, which is Dura is sort of harder but um, I love her work it's very very um, lyrical um, it also has a political back to it um, uh, kind of undertone to it and um, and it's quite the, her books are quite epic they're, they're they're usually quite big stories she also wrote a book called Paula which is or Paula which was about the death of her daughter so you know she too has gone right to the bone of her own emotions and her life um, so she's very remarkable for me Graham Greene of course I mean because he's a master um, because he used to live very close to me and I used to see him quite a lot and um, when my very, very first book was coming out, he was sitting next to me on the plane. And I was, I, just, I was on my way back from Australia and I changed planes in London and he joined the South of France flight in London. We were sitting either side of the couloir. The, the, the couloir. And um, I was reading one of his books. I picked it up at, at Sydney Airport. I'd read it several times before, but I was looking for something to read and picked this up at Sydney Airport. It might have been Brighton Rock. And he saw it. And we started talking, he was laughing, and we started talking. And then I used to see him quite a lot in the South France. He didn't remember me, and I was too shy to say, hey, we talked on a plane. But um, he's always inspired me enormously. And I think I'd pick one more, which is a French writer, a Provençal writer called Jean Giorno, who's not very well known over here, I don't think. 
he wrote a book called The, uh, the Man Who Planted Trees, which when I finished writing one of my olive farm books, I think it was The Olive Season, when I was writing about um, a miscarrying a, a little girl that I, that I lost, um, through the book we planted a lot more olive trees on the land and it was a kind of redemption and regeneration for me. Um, when I, the day I delivered the book I thought maybe this is really silly and I went into Dawn's bookshop or somewhere, I went into a bookshop in London and there was this beautiful copy that I'd already read it and I thought somebody saying something to me, it's about planting trees, regeneration. So the book's always had a slightly, I don't know, like a kind of guardian angel feel to it for me. So they're the ones I pick. My top five writing tips, gosh, I wish I knew them. I, I share them with myself. Um, well, be at your desk, you know, turn up. That's the first one, be there sitting there at whatever time it is you decide to start work. That's essential, because if you're not at the desk, it's not going to get written. Um, I think not to get dispirited, even on the days when it all feels absolutely lousy, is to, is to continue with the theme that you've got in your mind, um, because some people write much more constrained work, uh, constrained in the sense that they stick to the, the journey that they've plotted out in advance. I don't work like that. I'm a much more free moving writer. I mean, I have the idea and the characters begin to live for me and then and then I push forward with, a, with I hopefully, with them speaking to me. So even on the days when you feel nothing's happening, don't get dispirited. So turn up, don't get dispirited. Um, not too many adverbs. That's Stephen King taught me that and he stands by that. So I think that's rather good. I, I think in my early work, I, I rather wrote too many adjectives. Um, so to try and take the work down to the bone as much as possible. Um, rewrite until you're happy with it. I do, I do about six drafts. And the last one, be delighted when it's published. I mean, enjoy that moment, because it is something very special. Every single time it's something very special. I'm working on a book for Penguin. Um, and again, hashtag I'm writing. I'm working on a book which is set, uh, it's, the, it's a second novel, it's nothing to do with The Forgotten Summer, but it is, uh, it's also set in France. Um, it has also, uh, I think, a, a sort of emotionally epic line to it, I hope it has, um, and it's, it's sort of um, a longer time frame than, the, the Forgotten Summer has one, one part of it that's very much in 60, written in takes place in 1962 and then the story develops over 20 or 30 years. This book goes, the new one goes back further um, and comes right up to, if it all pans out the way I think it's going to, it comes right up to, the, it's very topical what happens at the very end of it, if that's what happens at the very end. I mean it might change in the next draft but um, so that's what I'm working on now. My new novel, The Forgotten Summer, I love it. I mean, I love it, that sounds rather conceited. What I mean is, I've loved writing it, and I love the world that's, um, that I've created in it, the people, and uh, it's set in the south of France. It's set, it actually ends now, though it's the first part that I wrote, where, um, it, at the end of the Algerian War for Independence with France, which was in 1962, when a, a very wealthy colonial family flee Algeria and come and set up home in France and buy themselves this really fabulous, those run down at the time, vineyard. And I started asking myself, you know, how it would be for a family that have been completely dislocated from their original home where they were born because of war, because of independence. Um, and I've put them into the south of France, and it's just which members of the family get out. It's two women and a boy. And into their lives comes uh, an English girl who's seven years old with her father. It's because it's the 60s and 70s. The father wants to learn about wines, French wines, because at that stage in England, wine was not the thing, it wasn't all these wine bars. So he wants to learn about it to make a business for himself here in England. And he goes to the south of France to meet these women and takes with him his daughter, who befriends the little boy. And so a love that begins in childhood, an enduring love, um, is born. 
and it's the story as they grow up and what happens and the secrets that unfold and the mysteries and, and the hidden dramas of what happened before the story began. So it's a love story with lots of secrets and mystery.